This is the very first part of the basic series where we'll go over the very basics of object-oriented programming from a Java perspective. This series will define the basic elements which includes objects, classes, interfaces, and packages. So what is the object in object-oriented programming? To help explain this, let's start out with a simple real-world object, a car. A car can be in various different states, parked, neutral, drive, and reverse. A car can also behave in certain ways, such as brake, accelerate, and turn. In object-oriented programming, objects are just a collection of related state and behavior. The state is stored in fields, also known as variables, and behavior is stored in methods, sometimes referred to as functions. Methods are used to manipulate the object state to perform a desired behavior. They are the means for object-to-object -object communication. For example, if we want our car's speed to increase, we step on the accelerator to increase the speed. You can think of a car as having a variable called speed and a method called accelerate to increase its speed. So what makes objects so great? Since all the related state and behavior are stored in one place, this makes everything very modular. All the code needed for a car is stored in one convenient place. Since everything is in one place, we don't need to rewrite any code if we require a car object. We simply create a new car object and it will have all the fields and methods as every other car object. Since the state is hidden from us and we only interact with an object with its methods, we don't really need to worry about how something gets done, but rather just that it gets done. This way the car can keep the implementation details of how it accelerates to itself and all we see is a car accelerating. Another great feature that comes with the code being modular is that it's easy to fix a bug in your code since it will most likely be located in just one class. This way you only need to fix the error in one location and not in multiple locations throughout your application. This marks the end of this video. In the next video in the series we'll go over what a class is and how they relate to objects. If you found this video helpful, then feel free to hit that like button, or share it with your friends. If you'd like to stay updated on new videos, then consider subscribing. I hope to have new videos for you shortly. Thanks!